how a lot of other people train, but it was literally a bar conversation. And for him, just a passing thought. For me, it was not a passing thought. It was, that makes so much sense. So when we're thinking about this, so if we've got, you know, obviously your ankles need to be able to move and they need to be able to move kind of three dimensionally. Your knees, if we're thinking about what that joint needs, it needs to be stable. When we think about what is a knee injury, a knee injury is a loss of stability. So if you have, when you tear your ACL, you lose your rotational stability of your knee. When you tear your MCL, you lose your medial stability of your knee. You tear your lateral collateral, you lose your lateral stability of the knee. We don't want those joints to become unstable. We look at, you know, same thing, hips. Hips need to be mobile. That's a really easy one, but it's gonna tie back into the whole FMS idea. The lumbar spine needs to be stable. This goes back, um, Vinny had made a point, I don't know, again, people are starting to freelance with core stuff again. And yeah, Vinny thinks he actually witnessed a Russian twist the other day, which I'm gonna hope never really happened, but he says that he saw one. No one should be doing Russian twist. Russian twist is a dumb idea. Okay, it's, it's challenging end range in a way that we don't want to challenge end range. So we should see that in. So we want to think about, when we're thinking about training the lumbar spine, we want to be thinking about training it for stability. The area where we get screwed up is people think, these are not absolutes, because what will happen, and this is the internet argument thing, people will say, but the knee has rotational movement. Yes, it does. It has deliberately limited rotational movement, very, very small, and you would never, I always say, you would never think when, like if we said, okay, we want to do ankle mobility work, right? And everybody's got no problem doing ankle mobility work, however we're going to do it. If you said we want to do knee mobility work, nobody would be in line for that, right? If you said, we're going to start doing like some medial collateral mobilizations where we're going to try to push it. Look, Jenny just made a face, but, right? So, but when you think, but yet it, you, it should be able to move. It does have rotational capability. It does have some ability to translate valgus varus, but we don't want to test those end ranges. There's no value in testing those end ranges. There's no value in trying to improve those end ranges. So that's what we've got to think about. The hip is the most confusing one because within, well actually, we'll get there, never mind. Um, thoracic spine needs to be mobile because that's where we're getting a lot of our, if we're getting rotation in our spine, we're getting it primarily through our thoracic spine. We've talked about this in staff meetings. The lumbar spine is deliberately limited. The vertebrae are different shapes intentionally. They're bigger. They're made to accept load. They have way less rotational range of motion. Most of your lumbar vertebrae have about two degrees of movement intentionally. So that's what we're saying. With things like Russian twists, any kind of twisting stuff that we do where it ends up going at somebody's lumbar spine is a negative, not a positive. Because what you're trying to do is take something that's been deliberately limited and then you're stressing it in a way that's not beneficial. There isn't a benefit. We can't find a stated benefit like, hey, you need more lumbar mobility. Yes, rare occasions if someone's in physical therapy, you might actually find someone where they say, hey, those vertebrae are locked up. Different story, not for us. So, um, and then, you know, we move our way up. You know, and this is the bad part, you know, Upper cervical spine needs mobility. You know, people get a little, they get, people have gotten a little carried away with the idea in terms of people start to go, well, you know, what about phalanges? What about, it's like, it's not, the idea is just to give you a, a conceptual model to think about what does that joint really need? So if we look at this, right, ankles need to be mobile. How do we do that? We self mobile our ankles. So when we're doing literally, and you know, the ankle mobility stuff that we're doing as well, it's self mobilization. A physical therapist, John could put you on the table and mobilize your ankle. But we can put you up against the wall and mobilize your ankle. Doesn't really make a difference. Your knee needs to be stable. That's your strength program, right? I just, you know, that's why we're doing split squats and all the unilateral stuff that we're doing because we want to create more strength, which is going to stabilize that joint. Your hips need to be mobile. The hips is where it really gets complex and where a lot of what we're going to talk about is going to revolve around because. You, you know, you can foam roll, you can stretch, you can do activation exercises, because when we think about hip mobility, I need to be able to get into positions passively, like leg cradle. But I also need to be able to get into positions actively, like hip flexion. So with hips, we've got a muscular component and a connective tissue component, both of which we have to address. So that's, to me, the most complicated. Lumbar spine needs to be stable. That's why we're thinking 
anti-rotation exercises, anti-extension exercises, anti-lateral flexion exercises. That's why we're doing carries. That's why we're doing side planks. The other aside that um, Vinny had mentioned, we're seeing all kinds of like crazy side plank shit. Okay, we don't need crazy side plank shit. Most people are not ready for crazy side plank shit. So if you're just throwing, I can tell you that in our professional athlete group, we have never put, we've never done a side plank with an opposite leg raise. We've done Copenhagen's, you know, we've done some where we're doing some adductor work. We've never done any where we're doing long lever abductor work. And I don't, again, not sure why that starts to drift in, but that's another one that's drifted in. Um, thoracic spine needs to be mobile. Again, self-mobilization. That's why we're on the roll. That's why we've got people hands behind. That's why we're trying to get people to get their elbows together when we're foam rolling because we want to get anterior, posterior mobilizations of those thoracic spine vertebrae. That's why we're doing rotational stuff. That's why we're doing V, to, v stance T-spine. We're doing all that stuff to try to drive more mobility into the thoracic spine. Scapula thoracic joint needs to be stable. That's why we're doing things like floor slides and wall slides and shoulder flexion, all that stuff. Your glenohumeral joint needs to be mobile. Your glenohumeral joint needs to be mobile, but people say it's already, it's a really mobile joint. It is a really mobile joint, but what most people will do, again, I, I watched somebody Saturday doing, he was doing some internal rotation stuff on the floor and he's lying on his back and he immediately, he does this and then he proceeds to do this. And he gets, oh, I got, look at how much range of motion I got. And I get like, yeah, half of that is not, Half of that's fake. Half of that was your scapula moving. Now I want you to lock your shoulder blades down. And then, like for me, I can get to 90. That's as far as I can go. That's all most people are going to have. Some of our adult clients are going to have significantly less than that. But if you watch them, what most people will do, because their glenohumeral joint is not mobile, they will move their shoulder blade. They will substitute scapula mobility for glenohumeral mobility. So we need to look at someone and think, can they lock their scapula down and move their glenohumeral joint exclusive of their scapula? In much the same way that we're trying to get somebody, okay, can they move their hip joint in the absence of their lumbar spine? So we've got to be able to think about that stuff. <clears throat> and then the thing to look at, well, what happens when somebody gets hurt? When you sprain your ankle,